dear friend today i'm going to continue from the place where i stopped at the first video if you have not seen the first video it's better to stop this and go through the first video and come to this lesson because those theories may be those theories will be repeated again and again to this, uh, I start with this certain question where it says, the vertices of a triangle, A triangle, R, A, B, C, and the coordinates of X is being said X1, Y1, coordinates of B is being said X2, Y2, coordinates of C is said x3, y3. Then they ask the coordinates of the in center of the triangle. To handle this certain question, you should have the memory of the theory I did the last x1, y1, x2, y2 divided to the ratio m to n. This certain point comes to n, you go to the coordinate at a distance, n x1 plus m x2 divided by m plus n and the y coordinate would be n y1 plus m y2 divided by n plus n and then to handle this question, you got to be aware of the O-level theory of the in-center. What is the in-center of a triangle? Get a small, small note of it. Say, in-center of a triangle. In-center of a triangle. Now look here, then we take a triangle, when we take a triangle, look here, let it be ABC, this is O-level theory, unless you know this, you can't do this question. Then you take the bisector of the angle A, you take the bisector of the angle A. Then you take the bisector of the angle B. And then you take the bisector of the angle C. You take the point where the three bisectors uh, coincide. And then take this point, take this point, you take the perpendicular distance from that point to one side of the triangle to be the radius and then you try to draw a circle which would touch all sides of the triangle. The circle touches all sides of the triangle. Since the circle is within the triangle, you call it the in circle of the triangle. The center of the in circle of the triangle is called the in center. The center of the in circle of the triangle is called the in center. So, Basically, how to get the in center of the triangle? You get the point where the three inner bisectors of the triangle coincide. Take this certain point. Then you got to keep in your mind or else get a small note of it is that the point where the bisectors of the three triangles three angles coincide is said the in center of the triangle. Then, also to handle this question, you should have the O-level geometry knowledge. 
is it? Taken a triangle ABC. Consider the triangle ABC. If I draw the bisector of this certain angle, and if I take the point of intersection of the bisector and this side to be D, according to O level geometry, you get some sort of theory like this. A, D to D, C, the ratio. A, D to D, C, the ratio is equal to the ratio A, B to B, C. Very easy to remember is that you start from an end point and then you get A, D to D, C. You get AD to DC is equal to AB to BC. This is the O level knowledge also needed to do this question. If I to repeat, you take the bisector of this angle, if it cuts this BC at D, start from an edge here, A, the ratio AD to DC. The ratio AD divided by DC. AD to DC is equal to the ratio AB to BC. AD to DC is equal to AB to BC. Reminding all this, I'll try to go into the question. Is that the question says the vertices of a triangle are A, X1, Y1, B, X2, Y2, C, X3, Y3. I would take the triangle to be as such. I would take the triangle to be as such. Let it be A, B and C. I would first Take the O-level geometry part of the question is that I draw up, I draw the bisector of this certain angle. I draw the bisector of this certain angle. I draw the bisector of this certain angle. It cuts this point at D. And also, the question says the word, the lens of BC, CA, AB, A, B, and C. As such, in trigonometry, in this question also, the length of the side in front of A is taken as simple A. The length of the side in front of B is taken as simple B. The length of the side in front of C is taken as C. In the question, it was said. The lens of BC, BC, CA and AB are A, B and C. Now, since the bisect of the angle A cuts BC at D, we get, we get, starting from this point, BD to DC is equal equal to B A to A C is equal to B A to A C B A to A C that is B D to D C the ratio B D to D C the ratio is equal to B A to A C in the sense is C to B C to B now this point D divides BC to the ratio C to B. Then I would ask you the question, if the complete length of this side is A and if this point divides this certain line to the ratio C to B, C to B, what would be the, what would be the length of BD? What would be the length of BD? Complete length is A. This divides to the ratio of C to B. I want the length of this side part. 
you close the video for a moment, take, in, take a piece of paper and try to write it in your own. Try to write it in your own. Could you? Is that? BD is equal to? BD is equal to? You take the complete length A. You divide by the total of the two ratios, B plus C. And you multiply by the ratio which is to come here is C. It is appropriate to be D. You take the complete length, divide by the total of the ratios B plus C and divide this, multiply by this certain value C. Again, I would repeat, the complete length of the side divide by the total of the two ratios. Then if you, if you are to take the length of this, port, this portion, you multiply by C. If you want to take the length of this certain portion, you multiply by B. Then B T is this. Then I would take the bisector. I would take the bisector of the side B. Angle B. I'll take the bisector of the angle B. Then. Then. You consider this certain triangle. Triangle BAD. The bisector of the side B has AD at this certain point. Let it be the in center I. Because if you draw the bisect of this angle, it also help, has to go through the same point. Now, from the triangle DBI, from the triangle BDI, BD, uh, BDA, from the triangle BDA, look here. The bisector of this certain angle has this side at the point I. Then again from the theory before, BI to IA, BI to IA is equal to, I repeat, BI to IA. B I to I A has to be equal to D B to B A. D B to B A. D I to I A is equal to D B to B A. Is equal to. Now, D B we have found before. This db we have found before. If you substitute this value here, you get a c divided by b plus c divided by b a divided in the sense multiplied by the one over value b a b a b a is b a is c b a is c and then. This uh, C and C would get cut. It would be, the ratio would be A to B plus C. The ratio DI to IA, DI to IA is A to B plus C. In your mathematics syllabus, this certain part of simplification you get at many places you get it in uh, when doing straight line you get the same simplification when you're handling vectors you get the same simplification when you're handli handling uh, forces so you do the, do this if you are not familiar with it do it many times and see that it gets familiar to you
get very familiar. Do it many times uh, if you are not if, uh, uh, used to the simplification. As I so told you, you get in straight line vectors and uh, system of forces. Also, you get the questions of this form. Look okay. here. Then I would say this is O level geometry part of the question. Then I will try to introduce the A level coordinate geometry here. A has to be A has to be x1 comma y1. B has to be x2 comma y2. And C has to be x3 comma y3. Now we want to get the coordinates of this certain point i. We want to get the coordinates of this certain point i. How to get the coordinates of the point i? Now, the coordinate geometry part of this certain question. Look here. When d divides bc to the ratio c to b. When D divides, when D divides BC to the ratio C to B, the coordinates of D would be BX2 plus C x3 divided by B plus C. Come on. The y coordinate would be B y2 plus C y3 divided by B plus C. The coordinates of the point D. For it to be easier for us to talk about the subject, we'll call it the x coordinate of the point D and we'll call this the y coordinate of the point D. And here I would mark this point as xd, comma, yd. Then since I divise d a to the ratio a to b plus c, since I divide I divise b d, since I divide d a to the ratio to the ratio a to B plus C. A to B plus C. The coordinates of I would be, again the theory I did the last week, A into the coordinate at a distance A into X1 plus B plus C into XD B plus C into XD divided by A plus B plus C, divided by A plus C, B plus C, as such in the theory divided by M plus N. And the, then the Y coordinate of this point I would be A into Y1 plus B plus C into YD, B plus C into yd divided by a plus b plus c. My dear students, look here. In mathematics, if you just look at the question, you will not get the complete idea. While looking at the question, you write it. In when teaching in a class, we give time for the students to write the write the write the Mathematical simplification, but here if we talk like that, it will be waste of your data. Therefore, 
go on doing you can always pause the video and then go to a piece of, piece of paper and write it then look here again you get a x 1 plus b plus c into x d x d was b x 2 plus c x 3 divided by b plus c it was b x 2 plus c x 3 divided by b plus c complete thing divided by a plus b plus c a plus b plus c come on then you get a y 1 plus b plus c then you get a y 1 plus a y 1 plus b plus c y d instead of y d you substitute this you get b y 2 b y 2 plus c y 3 divided by b plus c the complete thing divided by a plus b plus c then this b plus c would get cut with this b plus c again this certain b plus c would get cut with this b plus a and you will end up as a x 1 plus b x 2 plus c x 3 divided by a plus b plus c and then you get a y 1 plus b y 2 plus c y 3 divided by a plus b plus c. I would repeat a y 1 plus b y 2 plus c y 3 divided by a plus b plus c. It would be a y 1 plus b y 2 plus c y 3 divided by a plus b plus c. And this is the coordinates of the in center of the triangle. Right, right underneath. This is the coordinates of the in center of the triangle. And the next topic I have to talk, I have to teach you would be the angle between two given lines the angle between two given lines it is the angle between two given lines let's talk let's, let's uh, consider the theory like this right underneath consider the angle between y is equal to m1x plus c1 and y is equal to and y is equal to m2x plus c2 now i'll take the y axis And the x axis, then I take one line y is equal to y is equal to m1x plus c1. Then, when you mean to see this m1, the gradient intercept form, what do you mean by the gradient? If you take this certain angle to be theta 1, pen theta 1 would be m1. 
and if I draw another line to be of this form, if I take it to be y is equal to m 2x plus c2. If you take this certain angle which it makes with this line makes with the plus direction of the x-axis, you get tan theta 2 is equal to m2. Now let the angle between the two lines be alpha. Now the Topic says the angle between two given lines. The two given lines y is equal to m one x plus c one and y is equal to m two x plus c two. Now, from O level geometry, you know that a triangle. When one side is extended, the outer angle is the total of the inner opposite angles. Well, in geometry, when in, in a triangle, when one side is extended, the outer angle is equal to the inner opposite, the total of the two inner opposite angles. Then from the geometry of the diagram, you write it. Say from the geometry of the diagram, we get we get theta one theta one is equal to theta one is equal to the uh, when the consider this triangle consider this triangle when this side is extended, the outer angle is equal to the total of the two inner opposite angles theta 2 plus alpha theta 2 plus alpha and we are in need of getting the angle between the two lines the angle between the two lines is this then we get alpha is equal to theta 1 minus theta 2 I will take the tangents of both sides. Tan alpha is equal to tan theta 1 minus theta 2. From the formula of trigonometry, you get tan A plus B is equal to tan A plus tan B over 1 minus tan A tan B. Applying that formula here, it would be tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2 divided by 1 plus tan theta 1 tan theta 2. Look here. We get that tan theta 1 is m1 and tan theta 2 is m2. Then this could be written as m1 minus m2 over 1 plus m1 m2 tan alpha is equal to tan alpha is equal to m1 minus m2 O1 minus M1 M2. Then you got to consider a little more about this formula. Is that think that you try to get the angle between two lines y is equal to 4x plus 1 and y is equal equal to 2x plus 3. You want to get the angle between the two lines. Now, for M1, you can either select this or else this. If you select this to be M1, this got to be M2. If you take this to be M1, this got to be M2. What, in what way should we handle? If I take this to be 
if I take this certain point to be M1 and this certain point, uh, this certain value to be M1, the gradient, and this to be M2. If I try to substitute in this formula, you get 10 alpha is equal to, for M1, I put 4. For M2, I put 2. 1 plus M1, M2. You get 4 minus 2 is 2. 4 into 2, 8. 8 plus 1, 9. You get 2 over 9. The angle between the two lines. But, you can also take 10 alpha to be, you take this to be M1 and you take this to be M2. Because when you handle a question, 50% you could write as M1, M2, else M1, M2. It goes after up. If you substitute like this, M1 is a 2 minus M2 is a 4 divided by 1 plus 2 into 4 would be 2 over 9. 2 minus 4 minus 2 over 9. Then, what is the correct answer? The plus value or the minus value? What is correct? Mathematically, both are correct. Is that the plus is the tangent of the acute angle. When this is the acute angle, this becomes the obtuse angle. Minus is the obtuse angle. Whatever the way, you get the angle between the two lines. I the, the acute angle, else the obtuse angle. Acute angle got by the plus value. Obtuse angle got by the minus value for the reason you know that. When tangents, when trigonometric angles are concerned, the first quarter circle, second quarter circle, third quarter circle, fourth quarter circle, all St. Thomas's College, all plus, sine plus, tan plus, cos plus, then is less than 90, all plus in the sense tan plus. When it's more than 90, only sine values are plus, tan becomes minus. Then, when you are in need of getting the acute angle between the two lines, right underneath, when you want to get the acute angle, acute angle, between the two lines, we get the, we get as tan alpha is equal to, look here, is M1 minus M2 over 1 plus M1, M2, where it could be a plus answer, else a minus answer. To get the plus value, you put the modulus. That is when you want to get the acute angle between the two lines, you write tan alpha to be modulus m1 minus m2 divided by 1 plus m1 m2. The angle between two lines, the acute angle m1. Now, whatever you substitute here, then m1 minus m2, m2 in what way you get it? When you take the modulus of it, you get the plus value. And the next topic I uh, to talk to you would be parallel lines. The next topic I uh, to talk to you would be parallel lines. Now you consider two lines with gradients M1 and M2. If the angle between the two lines is alpha, you get Ten alpha is equal to modulus m1 minus m2 over 1 plus m1 m2. Since we take the modulus, even though you write m2 minus m1, no matter, because you get the modulus value of it. Now, when the two lines become parallel, when the two lines become parallel, look here. Now, 
if the two lines to be parallel, this line has to come and coincide, come and uh, sort of sit with this certain line M2. This has to come here, overlap with this line. When it comes like this, then the angle between the two lines, when it comes here, the angle between two lines would be zero. When they become parallel, the angle between the two lines becomes zero. Alpha has to be zero. When the two lines are parallel, we get we get alpha is equal to zero. Take tangents of both sides, you get tan alpha is equal to tan zero, where tan zero is zero. Then for tan alpha to be zero, this is the numerator and this is the denominator. For it to be zero, the upper part, the numerator has to be zero. It has to be, it has to be M1 minus M2 is equal to zero. M1 is equal to M2. When the two lines are parallel, the gradients are equal. You take two parallel lines, it consider two parallel lines. Gradients are equal. Two parallel lines, gradients are equal. If you consider a line of the form, if you consider a line of the form, Y is equal to mx plus c, a line to be y is equal to mx plus c. A parallel line would be the same gradient y is equal to mx plus this becomes different, a dash. Another parallel line, it would be y is equal to mx plus c double dash. Keeping the m constant, the intercept part changes, keeping the two lines parallel. The next topic would be, say, perpendicular lines. And when talking of perpendicular lines, again we would come to the former situation, uh, gradient m1, m2 and the angle alpha, tan alpha. Tan alpha is equal to m1 minus m2, 1 plus m1, m2. Now, when the two lines become perpendicular, the angle has to be pi by 2, 90 degrees. You know that tan Pi by 2 is uh, not defined as infinite. For this to be infinite, always the lower part has to be 0. It has to be, it has to be 1 plus m1 m2 is equal to 0. 1 plus m1 m2 is equal to 0. m1 m2 is equal to minus 1. m1 m2 is equal to minus 1. And then the necessary condition for two lines to be perpendicular. The necessary condition for two lines to be perpendicular. Two lines to be perpendicular. Let the gradient of this be m1. Let the gradient of this m2. For the two lines to be perpendicular, it has to be that m1, m2 is equal to minus 1. For it to be 
parallel it was that the two gradients were to be equal when is a perpendicular the product of the gradients is minus 1 then I would try to convert the subject to a form that it will help you when handling questions. A line parallel to y is equal to mx plus c a repetition uh, a line parallel to this would be y is equal to mx plus c this mx plus let me see dash then I'd consider a line parallel to ax plus by a line parallel to ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. Consider a line is ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. We want a line parallel to this line. We want a line which is parallel to this line. Then, you know that for the lines to be parallel, the gradients have to be equal. Say, ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. Gradient is equal to minus a over b been taught in the video before if getting confused uh, look for the video before then come to this again the gradient is minus a over b that is a x plus b y plus c is equal to 0. b y is equal to minus a x minus c. Dividing the complete expression by b, you get minus a over b x minus c over b. Gradient is minus a over b. Then, let the gradient of the If the gradient of this line is minus a over b, the parallel line also has to be of the same gradient. Therefore, a parallel line could be written as the same gradient x plus. I would write something like c dash. When the two lines are parallel, Make the, this line, the gradient is minus a over b. This line also, the gradient has to be minus a over b. A line having the gradient minus a over b would be y is equal to minus a over b x plus c dash. Now, this is the gradient intercept form. I want to change this line into this form. This is a linear form. Then, I would multiply the complete equation by this b. You get by is equal to minus ax. Multiplying by b, you get bc dash. Then, I would take this minus ax to this side. It would be ax, by here. And you, this bc dash brought this way, it would be minus bc dash is equal to 0. Then, then, for this minus bc dash, if I put another letter, if I, this ax plus by plus c, if I put this to be d, the line parallel to be this would be of the form ax plus by plus d is equal to 0. 
that is when considering two parallel lines when considering two parallel lines if this line was taken a x plus b y plus c is equal to zero if this line was taken to be a x plus b y plus c is equal to zero when drawing a parallel line this a x plus b y is repeated in the same form a x plus b y a x plus b y repeated and instead of this c you get a d is equal to zero these are two parallel lines two parallel lines two parallel lines a line parallel to a x plus b y plus c is equal to zero is of the form a x plus b y plus d is equal to zero for example if you take a line if you take a line to be 3x plus 4y 4y plus 1 is equal to 0 a line a parallel line if you have to draw a parallel line this certain part has to repeat it has to be there. it has to be there then a parallel line would be 3x plus 4y 4y plus another value is equal to 0 the two lines parallel then you may ask me the question how to get this c when handling questions we'll go on little by little then Then, a line perpendicular to, a line perpendicular to, perpendicular to, y is equal to mx plus c, y is equal to mx plus c. It comes to be again a repetition. A line y is equal to mx plus z. Y is equal to mx plus z. If you have to take a perpendicular line, if the gradient is m dash, you know the two lines to be perpendicular, it has to be m m dash is equal to minus 1 then m dash is equal to minus 1 over m when handling a question when you have to get the gradient of the perpendicular line it's not necessary to keep on writing like this with knowledge at once you can write you take the reciprocal of it and change the sign that is, if you consider a line of the form, if you consider a line of the form y is equal to 3x plus 1, a line perpendicular y is equal to, you take the reciprocal and take the minus value plus some value c. c has to be found. Then, A line perpendicular, a line perpendicular to a x plus b y plus c is equal to zero. A line perpendicular to a x plus b y plus c is equal to zero. Look here. You consider a line. Ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. Then you have to talk of a line perpendicular. A 
a x plus b y plus c is equal to 0. The gradient is minus a over b. Always keep in your memory gradient is minus a over b. If you get some confliction, uh, check the first video, read the first video and then come back to this. Then let the gradient of the line perpendicular be m dash. Then you get m m dash is equal to minus 1. m is minus a over b. m dash is equal to minus 1. Then m dash is equal to this minus minus gets cut. It becomes when b comes here it goes to the numerator. And when A comes here, it comes to the denominator. Then the gradient of a line perpendicular to this is this. It could be written in the form Y is equal to B over X plus say a C dash. Then you multiply the complete equation by this A. You get AY is equal to bx plus c dash bx plus c dash let this b x b here a y brought this way minus a y plus c dash is equal to zero either written here or is is equal to zero written here then this knowledge is, is easy, very easy, but, but important. Look here. Look here. The line considered is AX plus BY plus. The line considered is AX plus BY plus C is equal to zero. We want to draw the perpendicular line. Without doing this all, without doing all this simplification, you write as, you take x, you write y. The coordinate of y, you put it to b. The coordinate of a, you put it to y. And change the sign of either of these. Rather than changing the first value, I would change this. And put another constant here is equal to 0. If to repeat, look here, you've got the line AX plus BY plus C is equal to 0. Looking at this, you've got to write the equation of the line perpendicular to this. Get this in your mind. This certain B, you put it here. This certain A, you put it here. Change the sign. Then this C value, you change it. AX plus BY plus C is equal to 0. A perpendicular line. AX plus BY plus C is equal to 0. A line perpendicular would be X, Y. You put this B here. It, for it to be the coefficient of x, this a you put it here, change the sign. That is, looking at a line of the form ax plus by plus a, you can write the equation of a line perpendicular. Then, if I had to summarize what I was uh, uh, talking with you today, the last part of the lecture is, is important is that if the line is of the form look here if the line is of the form y is equal to mx plus c A parallel line would be always 
y is equal to same m bin c dash a line perpendicular a line perpendicular would be y is equal to if the gradient of this line is m you take the reciprocal and change the sign c dash y is equal to m x plus a a parallel line perpendicular line then when handling questions the simple knowledge is important a line of the form a x plus b y plus c is equal to zero you got to talk of a parallel line then what is the mathematical theory behind a parallel line you write the same part you write the same part then this c you change it this has to be the same line parallel to ax plus by plus z is ax plus by then go along then in other this value changes if you have to draw a line perpendicular to this then this ax plus by x let be y here this b you put here and this a you put here change the sign and this can be some value is equal to zero now with the with the finishing of this lecture you are with knowledge to look at a line of the form x plus b y plus c and write a line parallel to it at once and then write a line perpendicular to that then if you feel that you got the subject to your inner life body then do please subscribe the channel and please uh, press the bell icon so that you could get any other lecture i put you get the, uh, you get it faster and my sort of teaching what you feel about my teaching you do please do a comment and i like it then i will say goodbye i'll meet with the next video very soon thank you very much